part three of a three-part series as a response to the videos, What is a Spirit?, where I brought up the question, is it possible for Christians to have demons? And this is, the, this is part three of the video series answering that question. Um, I want to think about some uh, implications for Christians with respect to what we've already talked about. Um, a lot of times you'll hear, and so this is Acts 16.16, 16, talking about possession, and we make a certain assumption about what that means. Um, it came to pass as we went to prayer, a certain damsel possessed with a spirit of divination met us, which brought her masters much gain by soothsaying. And so it's basically a fortune teller, psychic demon. Um, the literal translation, th this time I'm using Young's literal translation of this very same verse. Listen to how they say it, how they refer to possession. And it came to pass in our going to prayer that a certain maid having a spirit of Python did meet us. Okay, and so um, we think of possession as a, a spirit indwells you, it completely takes control of you, and maybe that's the end of the story until it's cast out by some kind of elaborate exorcism or some kind of a thing. You know, you got to crawl up and down the walls and do some stuff like that. Um, Having a spirit seems like it's much more of a casual affair than like being utterly possessed and controlled by a spirit. Um, I want to, since I'm thinking about this, I want to make a reference to um, the way that spirits influence us. Um, the way, the way that, like a lot of times Americans, especially Americans who go on a, a third world mission trip to Africa or Caribbean or somewhere like that will say, oh, well, how come it is that we see demons there so much? And, you know, you know, the rotating head, spitting pea soup, crawling up and down the walls, like doing just weirdo crazy things. But yet we don't see it here. Well, the, the, the spirits operate and tempt us in our lust and in our mind. Right. And so the, the lust is just a, a desire. And the mind is, is basically a philosophical justification for um, why we do what we do, whether it's denying that God exists or des desiring why we should be able to steal a car or have sex with anybody we want or whatever, okay? Um, spirits influence people, and they ultimately, their goal is to separate us from God and get us to sin. And so the, the, the question is, if we're going to make the claim that spirits are not influencing us in the United States... Well, then we also would have to make, right, because the last video we explored the relationship between de uh, demons and sin. If there's no sin in the United States, then maybe we could make a claim that the unclean spirit has passed out of the land. But I don't think we can remotely make that claim because people sin all day, every day. They lie, steep, chill, scheme, plot, and plan to the nth degree. And so maybe the demon is not so much something like witchcraft, Maybe the demon is more like mammon and greed and lust and pride, but the demons are influencing, um, definitely. Okay, so this verse, uh, um, this footnote is out of um, Mark chapter 5, verses 2 through 17, and again, you can find it in the um, section 3. Um, where it is excluding explicit and inferred references to the Holy Spirit. So these these don't have the green or the yellow, and this chapter doesn't have the green or the yellow, and it's just referring to spirits, which I conclude are not the Holy Spirit. Okay, And so this is the um, story of the Legion, and I'm going to just start reading a little bit of the footnote that I have here. Um, Legion, this story is evidence that many spirits can possess a person at one time. Roman armies had a battalion, a legion, which counted between 4,200 and 6,000 soldiers. And so this is one person, a vessel, that contained a lot of spirits in addition to the person's human spirit. And so we're talking about if, if it were 6,000 soldiers, it would be 6,001 spirits in this one vessel, which is kind of crazy. Um, consider what Peter says of God's house, 1 Peter 2, five. 
Ye also as lively stones are built up a spiritual house and holy priesthood to offer spiritual sacrifices acceptable to God by Jesus Christ. Just as the temple of God is built of individual persons, lively stones, uh, so too demons build strongholds with many individual demons. Each of these devils is there for a reason. And so, um, just, to, just to read some of this out of Mark 5, just to give a little context for what I'm getting ready to say. Um, when he's come out of the ship, Mark 5, verse 2, when he was coming out of the ship, immediately they met him out of the tombs, a man with an unclean spirit, who had his dwelling among the tombs. No man could bind him, no, not with chains, because um, that he had often been bound with fetters and chains, and the chains had been plucked asunder by him, and the fetters broken in pieces, neither could any man tame him. And always not and day he was in the mountains and in the tombs crying and cutting himself with stones and so we're seeing all kinds of fruit happening here with this guy who's under the sway of these spirits um cutting himself with stones when he saw jesus he ran and worshiped him and cried and said what have i to do with thee jesus thou son of the most high god i adjure thee by god that thou torment me not and so first of all from that we we get the relationship that though these demons have such power over this man that they can make him cut himself with stones and act like a like a a schizophrenic act like a madman right an animal um jesus is king of kings and lord of lords and they immediately acknowledge and recognize that he has the name above names and that that he is superior to them and they have to obey him and his power overwhelms them, and that's just the that's the end of the story, right? So that's the that's the reality. Um, okay, just as the temple of God is built of individual pieces, lively stones, so two demons build strongholds with many individual demons. Um, each of these, so m- most people would probably say, "I don't have one devil," but so then they definitely would say, "Oh, I don't have, I don't have lots of devils." Definitely not. But this is what devils do. We're given a picture out of Peter of of a of a this building that's built out of these spiritual stones. But it cre- it creates a building, and the building is a temple of God. What well, demons? I I suggest to you that demons do exactly the same thing, but they do it in our minds, right? Um, each of these devils is there for a reason. Think of what each of them is doing to this man. And so, right, it's not just that one spirit is influencing him and all the rest of them are sitting there watching. Like, they're all influencing him. Remember, Mary Magdalene had, I think, had seven demons cast out of her. And so the, the notion of people having multiple demons is not some, like, super rare thing. It, it absolutely happens. Um, each of these devils is there for a reason. Think of what each of them is doing to this man. The net result was no man could bind him. The chains had been plucked asunder by him, and he was crying and cutting himself with stones. So imagine the work of each individual spirit. One spirit filling him with dread and fear so that he wanted to be by himself. Another drawing him to the tomb so that he felt better being in a graveyard. Another giving him strength to break chains. Another giving him hostility towards others so they tried to bind him. Another voicing his blood-curdling cries. Another making him think that cutting in flesh was an outlet to feel better. Um, this is also associated with pagan religion, you know, cutting yourself and bloodletting. Another with sights on the region. The people um, wanted him to be sent away from the country, Jesus. Another that drove him into the wilderness. Another that forced him to be naked. Another that um, suppressed him from being in his right mind. And so... Um, this this man had a particular set of symptoms, but it, it was not just one spirit possessing him. It was a whole bunch of spirits, and they were all contributing their little share, as it were, in order to get him to think that way. And I want to submit to you and to me that we have many spirits that are tempting us in various ways, and they may be very small ways, um, but those ways add up. Um, I wanted to suggest to you, right, um, recall in the first video on the, the question, what is a spirit? And I talk about the, the human spirit. Part of the human spirit is the mind, um, is the way that we think. It's the way that we understand information and we analyze information that's going on around us, 
Um, that mind is a spirit, right? We have a tendency in their naturalistic Western world to think of the mind as the brain and period, right? But the Bible says that our mind is our spirit. Part of our spirit is our mind. And so a demon is also a spirit and their mind is in their spirit. And so can you see, we're not talking about apples and oranges here, right? We're, we're talking about an inherent compatibility of one spirit to influence another spirit, which is a demon spirit to influence our mind and to put thoughts and feelings and desires and attitudes and responses in our mind because it's invisible, because it has power, um, because it's inherently compatible with our mind just by virtue of the fact that it's made out of the same substance. It's not like a brick down the street is influencing me. A spirit is influencing my spirit. They, they are compatible on an inherent level. Okay. And then the last thing, um, sort of the last thing I want to do is to think about the way that Satan tempts people. Okay. And so we know that Satan is a a finite being by the fact being by the fact that he was created um, w- from Job. God asked him, "Where where have you been?" In Job's chap- Job chapters one and two, and he said, "Going to and fro throughout the earth." Right, a finite being can only be in one place at one time. They can't be all over the place all the time, right? And so, how how in the world can the devil tempt? A whole bunch of different people, billions and billions of people being just one person. Well, the answer is he has an army, right? He he probably has, my guess would be he actually has probably billions or trillions of demons at his command. And those spirits are the ones that are influencing us, right? They are the ones that are tempting us. And then I, so then I want, first of all, I want to suggest to you along the lines of what I just said, the many demons that there are many spirits that are tempting us, not just one. And um, I want to suggest to you that the, the temptations are not what we expect. And so, like, maybe somehow we have an expectation that, like, you know, like a friend is like, come on, just do this thing with me, you know, it'll be fun, or some kind of, like, peer pressure thing, something obvious, Something like we sit down on one side of the table with our lawyers and the devil sits on the other side of the table with his lawyers and you haggle through the fine print of the temptation. Like, if you do this, it will feel good. But I don't want to tell you that your soul will die. I mean, I don't know. Like, can, can, you, can you imagine that kind of scenario taking place? Like where you're sitting there and he somehow is required to inform you of every... Um, component of the temptation and and to inform you of every single um, possible outcome of the temptation or result of the temptation. Like, does the devil need your permission to tempt you? And I mean, I, th- I think that the self-evident and the obvious answer is no. He tempts us. We then have to be aware that he's tempting us and then we have to, we will respond one way or another. Once we become aware of it, either we will agree with the temptation or we will not agree with the temptation. Um, if, if we just do nothing, then we're implicitly ing- agreeing with the temptation, right? And so I want to propose to you that spirits, for the, and this is kind of like the model that we've been building from all of these, these uh, three videos, spirits come upon you or me from various means, whether they're coming from other people, laying on of hands, transfer of spirits, um, or you just pick it up, however you pick it up. And I, I find myself that, that when I'm in prayer and worship, I all of a sudden have all these, like whether it's distractions or whether it's um, confusion or pride or lust or whatever it is, like I have all this junk on me that it's not always obvious where it came from. I didn't necessarily even know that I had it, 
But then it, it manifests itself a lot of times. And again, what does the devil do? He tries to separate us from God. And so what is one way, one, I mean, one way is certainly worship and how do we come to God's spirit and truth? We come to God um, worshiping him and being filled with his Holy Spirit, but also we come to God in truth. And so how, we, how can we identify the spirits that are influencing us? Well, one way is to know, for example, in Galatians chapter 5, Paul lists, gives us a, lo- a list of sin. And there's other ones, I think Colossians 3 or something and other places. Um, James has one that we went over. Um, selfish ambition is devilish. Anyway, um, we, we need to understand what sin is, right? And pride doesn't have to be a, you know, strutting about, you know, busting everybody's car, you know, while you park your car 20, you know, 20 feet away from anything else or whatever. I mean, that's a bad example, but it's like, it's like, um, any kind of sin can manifest itself in just the teeny tiniest little ways. Okay. And we're not always aware of it. And so, um, sowing into God's presence, giving place to the Holy Spirit, storing God's word in our heart. So we're coming to God in spirit and truth gives us the opportunity for God's light to shine upon us and to reveal the things, search me, O God, reveal the things that we didn't even know are there so that we can break agreement with them and cast them out. Um, I will post a link in the description to um, my other channel called The Prayer Project. And in that project, I have a, um, a video um, with a biblical model of casting out demons so that you can know what they are. But let's say that you're skeptical or let's say that you just say, you know, I, I believe you, but I just don't, I don't know the, any demons that I have or whatever. Hey, okay. had to pray, search me, oh God, God, give me eyes to see. Open up my eyes and show me the places where I am giving place to the devil and where I am in agreement with the enemy and I know it or don't know it. God, please have mercy on me and search me and show me, God. Jesus, help me to understand and be aware, God, because I want to be filled, my vessel, I want my vessel of my body to be filled, not with me and my own desires and agreements with the enemy, but I want my vessel to be ready for every good use and to be filled with your Holy Spirit. And I want you to use me, God. So I just pray for eyes to see in revelation of the truth. Um, Show me that my demons that I'm agreeing with and giving place to in my sight. Amen.